Okay, today we're going to talk about installing six new fuel injectors and also putting in this design engineering Jeep fuel rail and injector cover kit. So hopefully this will help prevent vapor lock and heat soak and um, change those old original 200,000 mile fuel injectors. Now what we've got here is your typical Jeep XJ with the uh, venerable 4.0 straight six cylinder and we have one, two, three, four, five, six fuel injectors. And as you can see on this system, somebody did a uh, pretty poor attempt to cover this fuel rail. It doesn't go all the way down with this type of heat reflective material. And there is a little bit on these old fuel injectors. So let's uh, see what step number one so is. So when you buy a fuel injector, uh, normally it comes with a replacement fuel injector and the O-ring. And on this fuel injector right here, you can see it's got the O-ring right here and the O-ring right here. But what's good about this kit, if you want to just put this heat shield on it without putting new fuel injectors, you can because it comes with 12 fuel injector O-rings. Each fuel injector has an O-ring at the tip down here and an O-ring up here. Now inside this box, you get each individual wraps for each fuel injector and you get the uh, the large one this is for the entire fuel rail here with its logo and you have the manifold heat shield and as you can see it does come with 12 o-rings now you might want to if you're not changing your fuel injectors you might want to make sure you count these o-rings because i did one of these on my other jeep xj and it was actually missing one of these o-rings but thankfully i bought new fuel injectors so they came with the new one and you get two stickers with it and you also get some very very good instru installation instructions i use these step by step on my other xj and it was pretty much flawless it's not a hard job at all you could probably do this in a matter of uh, an hour or two and it's got great pictures in there and gives you some tips on how to do it. And I'm gonna even give you some more tips since I've already done this. And here is the heat shield kit all laid out. Three, six fuel injector covers, a fuel injection rail cover, manifold heat shield, and your O-rings. Now these fuel injectors are made by uh, Sorensen uh, or GP Sorensen. These are USA made, made in the USA, as you see. Now, on my other XJ, I ordered these from AutoZone. Both came from AutoZone, by the way. These also say made in the USA. Now, uh, these have already been installed on the other XJ. I did not film that. But I tell you, I think they're the exact same. And you actually come out better buying them separately. So if you get on the AutoZone website, you buy these separately versus the kit. And you literally save like 50 bucks total. So in the uh, little owner's manual that comes with each of these uh, GP Sorensen fuel injectors, it talks about their new design. The OE design has a little bit smaller inlet, or the new design has a larger inlet, and it talks about how they changed where the filter is in here that decreases the risk of contamination. So if you take a look here at this little uh, um, uh, note here, it gives you a part number. And if you look at the one that comes with AutoZone with the, uh, excuse me, they're both AutoZone, but the Duralast, notice it comes in a uh, plain Jane box, but the part numbers are very similar. They both have end in uh, 1461N. And uh, this, the Duralast, has the exact same directions and information about the new design in there with the same number. So I'm very, very confident these two are exactly the same but buy them separately because they're a lot cheaper. Now what they mean by the difference, look at the inlet for the original one here, how small it is, and the inlet for the new one. It's much larger and improved design. Everything else seems the same. This is why you should change these after so many miles. Look at this. This one has been, this one is split. You see, it's also kind of swollen right here. So even though these were working correctly, this could have been a disaster waiting to happen. Focus. See that split. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is you got to disconnect your battery. I've taken the uh, positive off of that battery. Now, the next thing you want to do is disconnect your fuel uh, rail from the fuel line. So the first thing 
I you want to do is a couple of nights ago I sprayed some PB blaster up in there. There's a little spring in there that could be could be seized up. So you want to spray this down with some type of penetrant lubricant. And this is a little uh, device that just kind of protects it uh, from coming undone. So this should pop right off with a screwdriver or with your hand. See if I can get it off like this. No, use a screwdriver. All right, all I did was take a screwdriver and pop it out. And then it pops right up and off just like this. All right, also release the fuel pressure from your fuel rail. So put a little something there to get the drip and take this cap off if you still got your cap a lot of xj's or four liters are missing this thing and there's a little schrader valve in there so you can take your finger or a little screwdriver and just press it and some gas should come out it'll release the pressure well i didn't have any okay well no pressure which is Probably not good. Uh, it's either my fuel pump leaking, uh, uh, the check valve in there is leaking and put, letting fuel go back in the tank, or these fuel injectors are dripping into the, um, in, into the intake or in the piston area. So well, one way or the other, we'll get it fixed. Now to get this fuel line on off, you're gonna need one of these um, AC and fuel line disconnects. You can get them from obviously Harbor Freight or AutoZone or O'Reilly or Advanced Auto has them, and I'll show you how that works. So this is the one I'm using. I think it's 3 8 So you take it and you put it over the fuel line. Before I do that, let me show you. This is extremely nasty up in there. Okay, so it's going to be probably seized on. I'm going to spray some more penetrant and blow it out before I attempt this. Okay, so once you pop your little fuel disconnect thing on there, now we got to shove it back into that to release the spring and that fuel line should come right off. So basically what I did is I used this little pair of pliers and pushed this up in there and it popped right off. Spilling a little gas, so make sure we put something under there to absorb that. All right, now that I got the fuel line disconnected, I uh, just want to let you know this. It's going to be a good time when you take this fuel rail off to get uh, all this rust and junk out of there. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is remove these little clips right here, and that attaches the fuel rail to the injector. You've got six of them behind these wires, and I'm going. You, when you remove the wires, be sure to label them. Looks like these were labeled in the past. And it's a good idea to label your injector wires, what number they are. Start with one here, two, three, four, five, six. These are the little clips that hold the fuel rail onto the injector. If you do lose them, they are available on Amazon and at the most parts stores. And to remove those little clips I just showed you, sometimes it's easier if you go ahead and pull off the injector um, pigtail there. Now, this one's actually missing the lock tab, and so is this one. But if you look back here, these have it. So that little lock tab's got to come up first. I'll show you that when I get to it. So see, to get to that clip, it's best if I just pull this one up and off. Now you will need to remove your throttle cable bracket, and it has a bolt right here, a bolt right here. I believe they're 10 millimeter, and a bolt down here. And uh, so if you, and then uh, we have to disconnect these and you move this out of the way in order for you to get to that. So once you remove those three bolts, those 10 millimeter bolts, the bracket will lift right up, but you have to take these throttle cables off. And to get these throttle cables off, you just push them forward and they will come off just like that, you see? And this back one here just kind of presses on. And then this bracket should just lift right out the way, just like this. Now we have a clear shot at the fuel rail. All right, this little red tabs here are locked. I'm missing a few of them, but um, anyway, the way they work is you slide them up like this, and then it'll come right off. See, this one broke right here. Hmm. You really don't need them. Um, I think it's more of a thing for the assembly line, but... I've looked online before for these and you can't get them, but if you 
push them down, they're not going to come out. You can even zip time if you want. Now once you've got all your wires removed and labeled um, and your throttle cables removed, uh, there's a few more bolts you've got to take off for the fuel rail. So there's one right here, and there's one right here, and then there's one way back here. Now this bolt here, be careful because it comes out like this, and it also has a little thing right here that holds this uh, adapter that uh, not adapter but plug I think that goes down to your oxygen sensor so be mindful of that when you put it back you don't want this sitting on the manifold there all right now that I got the bolts out you can see the fuel rail is wiggling a little bit this uh, wire channel here just kind of presses on on these large bolts back here so we need to gently lift this up and away so we can get all this off at one piece. All right, it literally lifts up. It's very easy to do that. So now what we're going to do is try to pull this fuel rail away and out from the manifold. Now, some of the fuel injectors might stick in there. We'll see. All right, I got it loose. Basically, all I did was gently rock it, and here we go. It's coming out all as one piece. Let me uh, free this other hand up so I can move these wires. All right, there she is. Um, looks like this was wrapped for heat soak uh, in the past, but look how bad these um, O-rings are. So, we are going to, um, oh, don't forget you got fuel in the fuel rail. We're gonna clean this up and put it back together. Another thing you wanna be real careful of, look at the dirt up in there. You want to not uh, blow that into the little fuel injector holes. So as you see, these fuel injector holes are quite dirty too. So I'm gonna figure out how to clean that up and vacuum this stuff out of there. All right, here's a closer look at the fuel rail. Once it's removed, it looks pretty ratty. <laughs> the, um, um, I don't know if this is dealer because these things were known for vapor lock back in the day. Uh, anyway, um, this is your fuel damper. It is debatable whether you even need that on a on it, but uh, obviously I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to clean this up, try to remove these. These O-rings are stuck bad. It's hard for me to get them out. All right, injector number one and number two were extremely hard to get out. Um, I really caution you on clamping this. I did not clamp it. I just wiggled back and forth, back and forth, put some penetrant in there, and when I finally got it out, these O-rings were stuck up in there. So you want to make sure that you do not have any O-rings stuck up in your fuel injection rail. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, pull all this tape off and inspect it. All right, after inspection, you can see the Chrysler emblem on there. So these are definitely the original, it says Siemens, so I guess that may, they made them for Chrysler. But um, anyhow, almost 200,000 miles, 180 something, almost and a quick comparison with the new one, both made in USA. You see the inlets are different because the little filtration system in these is different. And I explained that earlier based on what the, um, the uh, little piece of paper that came with it uh, was telling me. And the new ones, of course, come with new O-rings. All right, I peeled that old heat shielding off and I am going to try to wire wheel this and see if I can get it looking any better. Now, what I'm gonna do, you may not wanna do this, but I'm taking a brass uh, Dremel wire brush on a Dremel tool and I'm gently cleaning out where the ports where those uh, fuel injector O-rings go so it can really seat good. Then I'm going to wash the whole thing out with this brake cleaner, clean it real good. Now, the reason I think you should uh, wire wheel it and inspect it is because these things can rust out and uh, you don't want that happening because there's fuel in there. So I'm going to paint it. Uh, you really don't have to. It is uh, going to be covered by the, uh, uh, by the heat shield, but uh, this will hopefully hold off rust for just a few more years. And if you're going to paint it, be sure to cover up these holes. You do not want to get paint uh, flakes uh, in your fuel injectors. That would be bad. I'm going to use this acrylic enamel uh, automotive formulation. I do not know if it is uh, rated for fuel. It doesn't really matter. It's just going to go on the outside of that. There we go. I will just let that dry for a few hours. All right, the next step I'm doing is I'm cleaning these little holes out. As you can see, I've done that one. 
and most of them this is what they look like when they're not clean <laughs> so basically I ball up a um, paper towel a blue one not a not a white one because it'll it may drop down in there uh, they're not sturdy enough spray a little brake cleaner on it and then twist it with a screwdriver it works well okay now that I got the fuel injector rail all cleaned up and painted um, I'm going to take the new injectors and I'm going to put just a little bit of dielectric grease on each o-ring so you need an o-ring on the top and on the bottom where it seats into the fuel rail and where it seats into the manifold just a little bit okay now that I've got the fuel injectors installed on the fuel rail we are going to go ahead and put on the reflective cover that's for the fuel rail this piece right here okay first screw up remember this so you don't make the same so I installed the fuel injectors but what I should have done is not install the fuel injectors and put the uh, reflective cover over it first you see because these are the holes for these right here and this fuel uh, rail reflective cover does not have a cutout as you can see for the fuel damper so I'm going to put a slit like this in order to get that in there okay after I got the fuel injectors back off I uh, aligned all the holes. Remember, you've got to uh, cut a hole if you have this fuel damper. It comes with the holes for the fuel injector um, inlets right there, and it comes with holes for the uh, Schrader valve, pressure release, and all your mounting brackets. So let's uh, see if we can Velcro this up. So this is what it looks like all Velcroed up. I will, I am going to put on where I cut this some reflective aluminum tape to keep this from uh, splitting any further. And that looks a lot more insulated than what it came from the factory. And I used some of this aluminum uh, reflective HVAC tape to tape around that area that I cut to prevent any uh, more tearing or in the future. So this is what the finished rail looks like very satisfied with it. Now before we put our fuel rail back on we need to put this reflective uh, device in and what it does it goes over these uh, uh, bolt right here that this wiring harness thing clips onto. Okay this is what the reflective cover looks like it goes over let's see one to starting on the third head bolt back and it covers this gap here you see uh, pretty easy to install just slides right over. Now while I'm here I might as well fix some of this split loom here. I'm going to take some new split loom and put it on some of these injector wires. You see how this wire doesn't have one, yet this one's got one. All right, as you can see, I've got all my wires with the loom on it now. I took the labeling off of it and basically I just wrote on here like that's injector number four. I wrote with a little black sharpie on that because that tape's going to be in the way. Now to start the major part of the installation, you can get this split loom stuff that Radio Shack, if you still got those around you, AutoZone has it, Harbor Freight. I think most you know, auto parts or tool places have it. Sorry if you hear the lawnmowers in the background. So once you get this ready, injectors in, I've got my O-rings greased up. You very gently push these into those holes once you have them cleaned out and um, align the bolt holes up. So now that I've got all the injector holes lined up, I'm going to gently kind of with a little circular motion, put some pressure to the yeah, pop. You can kind of know they're in all the way when your mounting tab is flush with the manifold on all four. You can also take the fuel injector and kind of push it in a little bit and you can feel it seat. So now I'm going to put the bolts on and snap the um, connectors on. Now that I've got my fuel rail bolts in, I'm going to install this wire loom holder that holds this oxygen sensor wire. Okay, I've got the oxygen sensor brackets uh, secured and the oxygen sensor connector secured on the fuel rail. So time to work on the fuel rail um, injectors and connectors and then we'll have to wrap and them. While you're at it, you might as well use some uh, contact cleaner and clean every one of the fuel injector connectors for corrosion. It's You're, you're down here, you might as well do it. Okay, so you got six of these fuel injector wraps and you want the uh, shiny stuff on the outside and basically it wraps around the fuel injector uh, but the problem is the uh, the connector kind of gets in the way so you got to really finagle it around the connector. I'm going to show you what mine 
Looks like when I finish this injector. No, one of the things you may find that these little red connectors will break. They break on pretty much every XJ or 4 liter. So what I have learned is that if you take a zip tie and go it right through right here on your fuel injector connector, you can put a zip tie and hold the connector down to the fuel injector. And that's what I did. And it works really well. In fact, I think it works even better than these. So don't sweat about getting more of Okay, these. another quick tip. Don't forget to put these little locking things back on here. And if you look at your fuel injector, you'll see slits right here. You see? Right there. And uh, the uh, when this clip goes on there, it has to slide in those slips. And sometimes that fuel injection can be pushed all the way up and you can't see those little slits. So I had to loosen these and back it back out a little bit and put these clips on all of them before I tighten it down. Let's see if I can show it to you. So you actually, let's see here. I'm turning this sideways because I've got to find that little break in that slip so I can slide these on. There. And then you can take your fuel injector and turn it back up so you can put your plug into it. All right, so injector number one, this is what the final looks like. You wrap it around there. See the connector gets in the way. I mean, you could notch it out with, um, uh, with a pair of scissors if you wanted to, I guess. The main thing is to keep heat from irradiating. You could also put a zip tie on here because part of the uh, Velcro is, is attached very well, but the other part is not. So I might put a zip tie on that. And that's what it looks like with the zip tie on it all wrapped up. So I'm going to do it to the other five and I'll let you see then. Okay, I got the fuel rail completely installed. Every injector has its little protective uh, reflecting device on it. Everything has been buttoned up. All the electrical connections are back. Now all I've got to do is put this uh, throttle cable assembly back on and the installation of that is the reverse so I won't show you that. Alright, to recap, got my throttle cable assembly back together, got all six injector plugs correctly secured down, of course the entire thing is wrapped and the fuel rail is completely down. Uh, I do need to connect the um, fuel line and the battery. That just pushes on and clicks and then we'll crank around. And don't forget your little uh, fuel line safety bracket clip thing there. So I believe I'm ready to start it. Now remember there's going to be no fuel in the fuel rail so it may take a little while to start. So what I'm going to do is cycle the key a couple of times. Let it build up some fuel pressure. And then I'm going to go let the air out of this Schrader valve. See if we get a little fuel out of this right here. Here goes the fuel. Now here goes the first start. What always scares me about these is that I have a miss or one of the fuel injectors is bad and then you gotta basically take the whole thing apart. So let's see. All right, sounds good so far. Let's check them. Seems to be running smooth. No noticeable misses. So that concludes this video on this fuel injector cover kit and changing the fuel injectors on that Jeep XJ. So I hope it helps. Y'all have a great weekend.